Okay, today we're going to be talking about how the stone at the Coral Castle was cut. And really, he didn't do it really any different than we do it these days, uh, just a little bit more crudely. But in this first uh, image, you can see that they uh, just cutting a piece of stone using a cable and a pulley method. Cable doesn't really look like anything special. Uh, and he's got it around this pulley, and there's probably a motor or something on the other side. And then uh, you can see all kinds of bits and chunks of rock and stuff all over where he's been uh, using this method to, to cut the stone. And uh, that's not too much different than the way that Ed did it. Now here you can tell in this picture here that they're using a large wheel, wire saw rope. They're just using a piece of cable uh, to cut marble here. Uh, and it's just spinning in circles and they keep tension on it to... Uh, wear through the marble and coral is a lot easier to cut than marble believe me uh, but that's that's the way it's done even to this day this is an older photo of how they used to do it way back then uh, but now the machine that spins the cable is a little bit more high tech and it's in and it's diamond impregnated but in the other video that I did about the coral castle, um, I pointed out all these leaf springs in here, which are important. There's some short ones over here in the corner. And uh, this electric motor, and if, and if you look closely, you can see a very distinct groove in the pulley of this, of this motor. And that's important from the way I'm going to explain things to you. And he's got it mounted on a piece of wood here so he can move it around and stack things on it and weigh it down or whatever he needed to do there. Uh, and then this is the machine I showed you in the other Coral Castle video. Now, what he does is he puts high tensile wire in between here and cranks it with this handle, basically doing the same thing they did in the first uh, image I showed you. And you can see how the gears run it. And uh, these gears on the outside are supposed to keep the uh, wire from falling out from underneath the, the center wheel here. Uh, and I'm assuming this wasn't one of his better ones because it's, it's kind of sloppy, so he may have not have used this one that much. So in this picture here, you can see another piece of equipment with a handle and a pulley. And again, you can see a very distinct groove in this pulley. Stands right out, can't miss it. And then uh, again, you have the same thing here. He's got a lip on both sides so the wire can't fall out from in between there. And he just wedges the wire through there. It's weighted down with this concrete here, makes it really heavy. And then if you look over on this side, uh, there's an old pickaxe right here, head very, with a very sharp point on it, uh, a ball peen hammer head and a regular ball peen hammer here. And uh, this pickaxe, which is pointed on one side and has a broad head on the other, looks like he made the handle for this because you can see some twigs and stuff sticking out of it right here. Uh, and that, that stuff is all important. And then you have some longer leaf springs over here, uh, which we're going to talk about here in a second. And then down here, he's got a small tool that looked like he was using to put grooves in the stone. It's got a bunch of sharp things on it, and it looks like if you spin this, it could, it could grind a, a groove down in the rock. And then in this picture, and it's hard to see, but there's uh, two big coils of high-tension wire right here. Uh, and there's a pulley up here. He's got this block and tackle hanging off of it, but it's another pulley in there. And you'll find a series of pulleys all over in these pictures if you really look close. And again, this picture here uh, shows you an even better picture of the high tensile wire. He's got lots of it. And again, some more leaf springs back here. Uh, and you can see a little bit better picture of that pulley up in here. So if you look really close, it's kind of hidden. There's another coil of high tensile wire here. Uh, and you can see that pulley maybe a little bit better. I'm not sure if you can or not. And this, the way I'm doing this is kind of goofy. But anyway, uh, so he would be using the cable method for cutting these things out. You know, these shapes here, he'd be using that to cut that stuff out. And, and it on the outside, it looks like the stuff is very smoothly cut and looks all great and everything. But if you really look close, like at this picture here, the stuff is very, very crudely cut. Uh, so he would use the wire method to cut this stuff out, and then he would take the broad head of that pickaxe and try and smooth it out as much as he can, especially on these shapes here, which 
you probably spent a, a great amount of time trying to make these round and, and uh, make these planets here. So this is a way, uh, another way that we cut stone these days is a piece of granite. And uh, what they do is they got a groove cut in this right here, which you could use that one tool or the pickaxe that I showed you to put a groove in it. And then they drill holes in it. And then they just stick these wedges down in there and they just hit one from the next to the next to the next. And then they start all over again until the thing pops in half. And, it, and it's done that way to this day. And then you hear, see another guy here with, it's a rock. I mean, it's literally a rock. He did the same thing. Uh, he's got a groove cut in it, you know, kind of like you would a scratch in a piece of glass to cut. And he put his holes in there and he's just going to hit each one of these until that rock splits on the groove that he made in there. And that's exactly what Ed was doing. Now, you got to look at these leaf springs here, and leaf springs are all bolted together in the center. For me, uh, you know, it's a dead giveaway. A lot of people probably wouldn't know what these are, but some of them are flat and some of them are angled and everything. And if you look closely, there's an old sledgehammer right here, kind of like, you know, where's Waldo if you got to look at this stuff. And if you look, a lot of the sledgehammers busted away. It's all messed up. I mean, it's, it's a mess. And uh, the reason for that is, is when he went to cut his larger pieces, he would use the pointed end of that pickaxe or the wire method to put a nice big groove in the uh, coral. And then he would take these things, and he must have 50 or 60 of these things all over the place, and pound them down in there, just like you saw the guy splitting the granite in the rock. And he'd just keep pounding them down in there, uh, however far he needed, until that coral would fracture. And again, uh, Here's another pulley. This pulley's got a handle on it. Here's another pulley back there. And the guy was very creative the way that he did it, but it's, it's no mystery really, you know. Uh, you just really got to look at the pictures closely uh, to try and, you know, figure out what he did. But the way that he did it was very crudely, but it isn't really any different than the way that it's done to this day. So we're back at the beginning. And like I said, uh, the way that they do it now isn't really any way different than the way that Ed did it back then. It's just that Ed was a little bit more creative about it. But anyway, that's the way it's done. Hope you enjoy the video.